Good morning and welcome to worship at Westlake Hills Presbyterian Church. Our mission here is to invite people into God's larger story as we follow Christ together. Thank you for wearing your red on this celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit this Pentecost Sunday. If you are worshiping with us from home, I want to encourage you to go ahead and get your communion elements as we will be celebrating communion together. And I want to welcome our new associate pastor, Stephen Finkel, to worship here. Hi. He and his family are here in Austin without any furniture yet, but they are here. And so we are glad for this new season of ministry and that you are with us. Will you stand Thank and you. let us call ourselves to worship? Today is a day of promise fulfilled. Come, O Spirit, dwell among us. A day when the Holy Spirit was revealed in flaming glory. Come, O Spirit, dwell among us. A day when power and inspiration flowed. Come, O Spirit, dwell among us. The Holy Spirit indeed does dwell among us. One of the things the Spirit allows for us is total honesty. And if we are honest, we all mess up before God. And yet, we worship a God who is approachable and gracious. So join me as we offer our prayers of confession together. Let us pray. 
God of living hope, you send us the spirit of courage, but we have been afraid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. Holy Spirit of forgiveness, come to us again. Flood our hearts and our church. Set our souls on fire with your love and send us out into the world rejoicing in your power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, scripture is clear. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is the amazing news of the gospel. In Jesus, we are forgiven. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
presence of the Lord is here for where two or more are gathered the spirit of Christ is in that place and we have the chance to share that spirit of peace of Christ right now I invite you to do so as we do that can the kids come up for face sharing so may the peace of Christ be with you all please share that peace Good morning. Hey, everyone. So, good news. We've officially started summer, right? And I want to know, what are some of your favorite things to do in the summer? Anyone have a favorite thing to do in the summer? Go outside is a good one. You, oh, microphone. <laughs> Play at the beach. Play at the beach. Hey, you guys. What else? Pl making a sandcastle. Making sandcastles at the beach. Anyone else have a favorite summer activity? Making waterfalls. Waterfalls. Well, that's a good one. Well, this summer at church, we are going to be talking about fruit. Do you guys expect that? We're talking about fruit this summer. Do you guys have any special, like, summer fruits? Like, I love to go outside and eat watermelon during the summer. It's one of my favorite fruits. Anyone else have a, a good summer fruit that they like? Emma? Strawberries. Strawberries. That's a good one, too. Josh? Watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. What about you, Josiah? Strawberries. Strawberries, too. Brayden? Grapes. Grapes. Raspberries. Raspberries. I did bring some here, too. I got apples and lemons and grapes. Watermelon. We play with this watermelon. We play with this kind of stuff downstairs, too. But... We're not exactly talking about this kind of fruit this summer at church, not really about apples and watermelon. He likes hot dogs. I do too, actually. Um, but we are talking about something called fruits of the spirit. So it's not exactly like oranges and bananas like we think fruit, but it's ways that we can act and things that we can do. And so fruits of the spirit are things like loving other people. And fruits of the Spirit are showing kindness and gentleness and joy. And so this summer, we're going to be talking about different ways that we can act and different things that we can do here at church and to the people in our lives that show them different fruits of the Spirit. So as you're nibbling on fruit this summer, I want you to stop and think, oh, it tastes so good, right? And then I hope it triggers something also too, thinking, hey, these are different things things that we can do. We can show people love and kindness and gentleness. And there are things that we can practice like patience and self-control. So those are what we're going to be focusing on this summer as well as celebrating yummy, healthy fruit that we can eat. Okay. So you guys join me in prayer. We're going to pray together this morning. Here okay. we go. Dear Lord, we are thankful for summer and the fun activities that we get to do, and we're thankful for yummy fruit, delicious that we get to eat, Father. But I do pray that we remember your fruits of the Spirit, that we can treat people with love and kindness, and we can show joy and patience in our lives, Lord. And so remind us of those things that we can do daily, those small little things, Father, just to treat other people, Lord, the way that you have taught us to treat them. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Y'all be praying for Miss Tate because we start VBS this afternoon. We're so glad that you are here and we want to know about your presence. If you could grab that black friendship 
pad that's on the insides of the pews and fill that out. And I want to encourage you to note who is sitting with you. And if you don't know them, you can greet them by name at the close of the service. We have a lot going on this summer. It is not a time to slow down at all. In fact, we want to help you enjoy life. And so not this Thursday, but next Thursday, we are doing a tour of the Painted Churches. And we still have spots on that charter bus. Would love for you to join us. You can sign up on Realm or speak to one of the staff and we'll get you signed up. Our middle schoolers and their families are invited a week from this Friday to go to a baseball game out in Round Rock. That's going to be tons of fun. And a week from today, we have our all-church cookout right after this worship service. We will have hamburgers and hot dogs and vegetarian things. And that is to meet Stephen and his family. They're going to be there. To gr- we want you to greet them and have a big celebration. So I hope that you will come. No reservation is necessary. Then I want to tell you exciting news about these roses on the table. So this is a a church family, the Jenkin family, Megan and Will. We've baptized their other two children. You you know them. And they, we knew they were pregnant. And uh, then they didn't tell anybody that they knew they were having twins. And so this was this huge, she, she sent me this text and was like, surprise. And so these are in honor of their life of these two new children. First, we have Catherine Emily. She's going to go by Kate. And then Lewis Christopher, and he's going to go by Lou. So for Lou and Kate Jenkins, born on May 24th, we celebrate their life this day. I also want to draw your attention to these lovely red flowers over here. And this is to celebrate our two seminary graduates, Olivia Black. I see you back there. And Kevin Ireland. They just graduated from seminary. And we are just so excited that both of them are staying to work here. We're so pumped. Olivia is one of our associate youth directors, and Kevin is our pastoral resident. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your presence right here in this space, your presence that will leave and go with us wherever we go. We ask that your spirit that is here, that is within us, that it might teach us something this day, maybe not even from the sermon, but from the way that we encounter another human, the way that we hear and interact with the prayer, the way we take in the body and blood of Christ, whatever it is, God, we know you will meet us. And so I pray that our encounter with you would be so powerful that none of us could leave the same as we entered. Pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Some of the best toys in my experience were from things in the kitchen. Wooden spoons and plastic tubs for my kids to beat on. And then they would take cups and they would just stack them up, plastic cups, and then crash them down. But I was amazed at how just the simplest thing of two plastic cups and a little bit of water would keep them entertained long enough for me to get dinner ready. And they would just pour it back and forth take a sip, spit it, keep going. Water in general was a sure winner in our household. If we watered the grass, the water would run down this little gully here and the boys would chase it with like vehicles who could stay in front of it. When it rained, they were quick to be the ones to want to jump in puddles and they were the ones that wanted to ride their bikes through going, wee! And y'all know what happens when you do that, right? The water goes up the white shirt that you've just put on them. It was fun. While they had plenty of store-bought toys, water seemed to be the one that they loved the most, plus Thomas the train. But outside of that, it was water. Now today, they're all teenagers, and while there are still puddles for them to jump in, There is still water that goes down the little gullies outside our house. They have lost their delight in these childlike things. And yet water is still completely essential for them. They realize it's something they have to use to clean, something they use for for growth, for nourishment, for sustenance, and for cleaning. The Holy Spirit, friends, is a lot like water. It is a gift to all believers in Christ. 
And it is meant to sustain us, to nourish us, and to help us grow. And I think all of us kind of get that. We would believe that about the Holy Spirit. We might even define the Holy Spirit in that way. But the Holy Spirit is also a gift that is supposed to bring us childlike delight. Like water did when we were little. You see, the Holy Spirit is the nature of God that is meant to give us the sweet life. To bring us endless joy. So I want you to consider, do you think the sweetest part of your life is in the past? Now sure enough, if we were to define the sweet life as bodies aching less, metabolisms being higher, expectations being lower, and requirements being lower, and responsibilities. Well, sure, most of us would say, yeah, the sweet life, it was in the past. But as followers of Jesus, friends, we are guaranteed this all life long. All life long, we are supposed to be living into the sweet life, no matter what age or stage we are in. And this is the life by in and with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to get a taste of the sweet life this summer. And we're going to be looking at the ways that the Holy Spirit is alive in our world. And, and the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Galatia and says these are called the fruit of the Spirit. This is the way that the Spirit is alive and well. And there's nine different fruit. And we're going to look at one each week of the summer. But before we dive into the first fruit... It's really important, Stacy and I thought it's really, really important for us to make sure you knew how we define the fruit of the Spirit, how we define the Holy Spirit, because I think it is unique to maybe what you've heard in other places, and that is this. There is absolutely nothing that we can do to create more of it. There's nothing that we can do to work harder or smarter to make the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is God. And so since the beginning, before all the beginnings, it was the Holy Spirit of God that hovered over the face of the deep. The Holy Spirit simply is. And so what we want to do this summer is we want to, we want to be able to name where we see it. Because every single time you see one of the fruit, wherever you see love, wherever you see joy, wherever you see that, Let's name it. That is the Holy Spirit of God, and it is still present today. What we want to consider this summer is where do we see its fruit? I promise when you look for it, even in the midst of tragic events or of difficulties in your own life, I promise you it is there. To help us with our first fruit, we're going to look at the love poem from Paul to the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm always a fan of someone defining something by negation, saying this is what it's not. Because then you can like create this list in your head, oh, I just need to make sure I don't do those things. And so that's how Paul begins defining love as he says what it's not. And I really like it because he uses things that are easy for me to say, well, I don't do that. I mean, have any of y'all moved a mountain lately? Have any of you given up your entire body? No, right? So we're feeling pretty good as this love poem goes. 
Paul's speaking in hyperbole on purpose. He's using these extreme examples of unattainable things done by unattainable people for a reason. Because we know that if those things were done, if someone could move a mountain, it would be newsworthy. But even if it's newsworthy, Paul says, and it's done without love, it is for nothing. You see, Paul knew the group to which he was speaking in the church of Corinth. And it was a group that could be a lot like here. There were men and women. There were children and old people. There were single people, divorced, married, widowed. There were people who were free. There were people who were enslaved to things. There were Greeks and there were Romans. This was a very diverse group of people. And you know how it is when you get a whole bunch of diverse group of people together. They have different opinions about how to live in public and how to live in private. And you bet different opinions about how to do church right. And Paul levels the playing field. And he says, here before Christ, none of that matters. What matters is how you treat one another. And so he gives them this rule for life. Because the way that you treat one another, it really does matter. And friends, our world is starving for us to love one another better. All of the things that he lists, the love is patient, kind, those are actually a lot of the fruit of the Spirit. And so you're going to hear those fleshed out throughout the summer. But what I got stuck on this time was was verse 7. Listen to what it says again. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. So four times Paul tells us that this love thing does something to all things. And I don't know about you, but whenever anybody uses a superlative, I lean in. What can love do always I want to know and he says it bears believes hopes and endures so love bears the root word in Greek here is roof this is a like a markup of what a first century Capernaum would have looked like or a Corinth And look at the roofs in this picture. Well, when you look at a roof, you realize what it obviously would do is it would protect people that are inside it from the elements, right? But then look how it's providing shade to the animals and the people outside of it. Over here, you've got fish that are drying out on the top of the roof. So it's literally doing something to provide sustenance for the people And and does anyone notice an animal in that picture anywhere? Do you see the kitty cat? It even, this roof even provides a place for a house pet to feel safe and secure. Love bears. When we love one another, we protect the people in our lives from outside forces. It's a strength that's given to them. When we love, we provide space for cooling off. And when we love, we provide places that give time and space for nourishment. When we love, it allows others around us places to feel safe and secure. This is what love does. Love bears. And then he says love believes. And the root word for belief here is faith. It's to have faith in. And what does faith mean? But the assurance of things hoped for. The wisdom and conviction of things not seen. So love, believing, it means it's something that you might not necessarily see. It's agape love. But he is saying, just as you have been, so you too must do for others. Because see, it's rooted, if it's rooted in faith, if love believes, what is our faith rooted in? What is the pivotal, what is the moment that changes the way we view the rest of our life different than any other faith belief in this entire world? And that is resurrection. We have a faith rooted in resurrection that no matter how bleak a situation No matter how out of control things can seem in our country, 
in our lives, in our households, nothing is out of the reach of a resurrecting God. When we believe that there is always new mercies each morning, that God is always faithful even when we are not, that is love believing. And love hopes. Hope is similar to faith, but hope has this assurance that is based on the way things have happened in the past. So love, love remembers the times in the past when someone loved us even though we were really ugly. Love remembers and reminds us that none of us really deserved for Christ to die for us. But we have that assurance because he did. We have that assurance from the past. Love hopes. And love endures. Love stays even when it is so difficult. The Greek word that's used for endure literally means to stay next to. Part of love's very nature is that you're going to stick with a person even when it's difficult. Think about who God is. So that means love endures next to the person even though they might be unkind. Even though they're going to have a different political view than us. Even when they do something that really disappoints us. And even when they do something that hurts us. Love endures. This is what love does. This is how love acts out. And Paul is telling the church in Corinth, your world, our world today, it needs followers of Jesus to love in this way. It is starving for just some love towards one another. The Holy Spirit of God is surely present and abundant and alive in our world today. And the fruit of the Spirit is abundant around us. Let's go and taste it this summer. Let's go and live this sweet life. A life by the Spirit. May it be so in my life and in yours. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you exceed all expectations and that like water, you are going before us, making your way. And like water, you sustain us even when we are feeling so low. And so, oh, Holy Spirit, we, we relinquish ourselves to you. May you fill us up with your love. In Christ's name, amen. As Pastor Emily has reminded us, our world is starving, just starving for a little love for one another. And so there's an opportunity for you this summer. If you would like for the fruit of love to show right here in Austin, our ministry to our refugees from Afghanistan are looking for tutors for English, for children and adults. We'll take teenagers and we'll take adults. And if you would like to have a, a way to live the sweet life with some very special new neighbors, please contact Patty Prater, and she'd love to hook you up with this wonderful experience. Friends, this starving world is looking, looking for us, those called by the name of Christ, to share, to give. So let's bring our gifts to God.
I'm wondering if any of you that came in this morning need this table to be reminded of the depth of God's love for you. This is what God did, even before any of us were even thought of. God said, I'm going to come and show the full extent of my love by giving my own child for you. God is willing to go to the ends of the earth so that you might be known and loved. And that's what this body and blood represent the sacrifice that was for each of us long before we were even born. Friends, this is not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. Christ is our host. And he invites all who look to them, look to him for their faith to come and eat and be filled. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, because we are your people and we stand in need of your power. God, we come before this table today with grateful hearts. We come knowing that your spirit does indeed bear fruit in our world, in our lives, and we would have eyes to see it. Be with us. Be with us as we gather at this table. Because we've come today with fears, with concerns, with questions. And we're bold to ask that you would blow into us, blow into this church, this place, your irrepressible end of hope of love, of compassion. Let the breeze of your healing and your forgiveness, your comfort be felt by those today who are ill or grieving or trapped or lost. Fill those places in our world where violence and warfare, where oppression, hatred, and greed hold sway. And by the power of your spirit, be with those in danger. And empower those called to protect. God, as we gather at this table, we know the cost of love. We know that in love, your son came into this world. In love, your son gave his life so that we might know the beauty the joy, the fruits of a sweet life with you. And so now we would pray that that same spirit that swirled in that upper room on Pentecost now would swirl in us and among us. May this juice, this bread, become for us elements of your love. Bind us together. Help us to place our lives and our church and our future in your hands and light a fire in us so that we could be audacious people with daring dreams and unwavering faith. God, at this table, refresh us and energize our love in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These words of institution as they are recorded by the Apostle Paul to his letter to the church in Corinth that our Lord Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room on the Passover evening and after giving thanks he took bread and he broke it and he said this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper our Savior took the cup And he gave it to them saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death until he comes again in victory. Friends, this is the feast of love set for us. 
And we're going to partake today by coming forward and receiving a small pod, which will have the cracker and the juice, and then returning back to our seats. We will all take communion together. I'm going to ask you to exit to your right, come up to the station. There will be one station in front of each section, and then go back the opposite way. There is also gluten-free pods, but they are over at the prayer kind of window over there. There is also both gluten-free and regular uh, in the back of the balcony. So God has set us a beautiful feast. Let us keep it.
friends, if you'll take the, the wafer. This is the body of Christ. Eat and remember. This is the cup of salvation. Drink in remembrance of him. Let us pray. God, we are grateful. So very grateful that you feed us. You feed us with this small token, but so much more importantly, with the power of your spirit. We are so grateful when it bears fruit. And when just a little bit of love that bears and believes and hopes and endures shines in our lives and in our world. So as we leave this place, oh God, plant deep within us seeds that will sprout and grow. Help us to love. Help us to love in a way that will make life of those around us and our world sweet, sweet as you desire it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand as we close in worship? Friends, the spirit of uh, God is alive and well on this earth. And every time we feel the spirit, every time you see love, joy, peace, or patience, may we name it. May we live into this sweet life with the spirit that we have been given. And may you go from this place with new life. Don't forget, if you're going to Bible school, <laughs> to head on down to the dining hall for lunch. And if you are not going to Bible school, than to meet our new pastor out on the plaza. May you go from this place with new life, taking the struggles of the past and present, but those hopes and joys of the future as stepping stones on this journey of faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, amen. amen.